Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Loft tool in FreeCAD. So the first question, what is a Loft tool? Well, a Loft tool creates a 3D solid or surface in the space between multiple cross sections, which flow and blend into one another. Take for example this door handle. What looks to be complex geometry is actually just three separate sketches. So where is lofting normally used? Well, it can be found in complex natural geometry such as a vase, a variety of household bottles, door handles. In fact, most things that are handheld probably have some form of flow surface, which can be created with the loft modifier. How do we actually use the loft modifier? Well, the first one I'm going to show you is going to be in the part design workbench, and it's called an additive loft. This can be found up here on the tool ribbon next to the revolve sketch icon. So let's actually create this door handle using the loft modifier. So I'm going to create a new document, create a sketch, and I'm going to place that on the XY plane. I'm going to grab the slot geometry, click on our center point and move it out. Shift V, or Shift H, sorry, which will then be able to constrain our horizontal to 10 mil. And I'm going to constrain the radius to 5 mil. I'm going to close that. And with our sketch selected, I'm going to create a datum plane. We're going to set the pitch to 90 degrees. And we're going to set the X to 50. So what that should do is, is move our plane in the right direction. And it should also orientate it like so. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click on the datum plane, create a sketch. And I'm going to grab the circle tool. I'm going to click on our horizontal or vertical line in this sense. And I'm going to set the radius of that to 3 mil. Pressing Shift H, we're going to click the center of our point and click our origin point. We're going to set that to 15 mil. I'm going to close that, hide our datum point, and then I'm going to create one more sketch, which is also going to be on our X, Y plane. Now this is going to be exactly the same as our slot tool here, and it's just going to be on our horizontal, 10 mil apart and with a radius of 5 mil. I'm also then going to set the spacing between both of our slots. So from the origin point to the center point, we're going to set that to 90 mil. And we're going to say OK and close that. So now we've got our sketches. And as you can see, it's in this sort of layout. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to create the additive loft. So I'm going to select our first sketch and click the additive loft. I'm going to click on add section and the reason why I add, click add section first is because if I say uh, if I click the circle it will then create the loft but if I was to click the sketch and then click add section it wouldn't actually add it it needs me to click add section first and then click the actual sketch so as you can see it now creates this curve so it's actually blending from each individual sketch uh, to create the handle as you can see so a couple of things you need to know so number one it will always create the loft from the first uh, sketch you select. Um, and then afterwards, so if I was to remove this selection here and then add this selection again, it would create some sort of random spawn of evil, mainly because of uh, how we've selected it. So we've selected, in a sense, this sketch, moved over and selected this sketch because we deselected this. And then we've selected this one again and as you can see, it's created this. So if I remove this sketch, remove this sketch, and add this sketch here, and then add this one again, it then creates our loft in the correct order, or the order that we actually want it to be. So obviously we've got a curve here. So what happens if you don't want a curve? Well, that's where ruled surface comes in. So ruled surface basically picks the uh, basically creates a straight line to the geometry that you actually want. As you can see, it's going from one spot to the next spot without the curve. So if we take that off again, it will, it will give us a nice curve. Closed is uh, something that I can't actually work out at the moment. Uh, I haven't actually managed to get it to work properly. Uh, but basically what that would do is it would um, go from, if it can, or if FreeCAD can, it will go from the last point you selected and it will try to reconnect itself back to um, the beginning point basically uh, so I'm guessing most geometry or the geometry has to lend itself to being that um, which our geometry doesn't our door handle doesn't but yes that's basically what that is so I'm gonna click OK and that is now going to create a solid object um, like so 
So this solid job object can actually be um, pocketed if we wanted it to. So if I created a circle, uh, just very roughly there, and I clicked the pocket icon, as you can see, I can still actually modify or edit our part. Next, we're going to quickly look at the subtractive loft, which can be found here next to the grooving tool. We'll quickly create ourselves a cube and leave all the settings as their default values. I'm going to select the XY plane just out of habit, and I'll set the view to isometric so that I can see it better, and create the sketch on our top face. I'll take the polygon tool and roughly sketch it on the center of our cube. I don't need to constrain this as it will work anyway, but if you're creating something that needs to be accurate, then obviously make sure it's the size you want. Clicking on our top face again, or our sketch, doesn't matter which, I'm going to create a datum plane and set the Z offset to minus five. I'm going to increase the cube transparency so that I can see what I'm about to sketch. And we'll now create a simple circle on our datum plane that we've just created, roughly in the center of our polygon, like so. Hiding the datum point, again, just out of habit, it's not necessary, but just makes things easier to see and less cluttered. So I can select the polygon sketch, however, if I don't, I'll be prompted to do so when I click the subtractive loft icon, and that goes for the additive loft also. Sketch selected, I'm going to quickly double click the cube and hide it so that I can select my circle geometry. As you can see, I can't currently do that. Make sure to hide it while in the loft modifier, because if you hide it before starting the loft, it will just reappear. The raw surface and closed tick boxes are the same as explained earlier, although if you're creating a loft between only two sketches, it will automatically be ruled. We now have a pocket in our part created by a subtractive loft. So what if we want to modify the sketches? Well, the great thing is we can. Let's say I want this circle to be a square. I click on the circle sketch and create myself a square. The loft updates automatically. What about the square being off center? You can do that too. Again, the loft will automatically update. I can also click on this face and extrude it through the whole cube without any issues. Using our handle for reference, I'm going to delete the additive loft and make all three sketches visible again. Moving over to the part workbench, we have the utility to loft, which is on the ribbon here. If we click it, you'll see that we have two sections, available profiles and selected profiles. You'll also notice that we have both ruled surface and closed tick boxes, along with a new one called create solid. So to quickly show you, I'll click the first sketch and the right pointing arrow now becomes clickable. You can't select multiple sketches, so you'll have to move each sketch individually. I'll click it and this will move the selected sketch into the selected profile box. If I then select the other sketches and move them across, you'll see that more arrows become available. I can reorganize the order of our loft, which as I mentioned earlier is very important, and we can also move the sketches back into the left hand box by clicking the left arrow. If I tick the create solid box and say OK, it will create our handle in solid form similar to the additive loft. However, it will create a separate entity which can't be modified unless you go back into the part workbench and create a new body with that loft. So what about if you don't click the create solid box? In this case, it will create a surface like so. Now you can attempt to create a body from a surface of which you'll get a warning box like this. So I'll say use that at your own risk because I'm not really sure what the outcomes will be or whether the part will become buggy. I'm, not, I'm still not sure what I'll personally need a surface for, however it's there if you need it. Continuing with lofting just a surface, I've created two simple arcs, again not constrained and with a datum space 20mm from the bottom sketch. I'll click the utility loft, stick across both sketches and hit OK. This will now create this flowing surface. If I clicked create solid, it would still work, but it just won't create a solid form. To create a solid, the sketched cross sections have to be closed. I can now go into the part design workbench and extrude this face. Once you create the extrusion, it will become part of the active body, which can then be edited. Just be aware that sometimes it can turn black and totally bug out, probably because you aren't supposed to be doing this, but I'm showing you because it works and you, know, you guys can make your own decisions. Last but by no means least, how to connect a sketch to a piece of existing geometry. 
I've got this piece of random geometry which I've created with a polyline. I've then offset a datum plane 10mm from the bottom face and created a circle sketch. Now what if I want to loft from the sketch to my part or vice versa? Well in this case the sketch is available to loft which makes things very simple as you can see. But what if there's no sketch available and the geometry is too complex? Well unfortunately we can't loft directly to a face. It creates an error like this. It would definitely make things a heck of a lot easier because you wouldn't have to keep jumping to different workbenches. So how do we get around this problem? The answer, a face binder. Face binder basically maps a selected surface and allows us to loft to that shape. So we head over to the draft workbench and select the face we'd like to loft to. We then go over to the face binder icon, which is up here, and click. In our tree to the left, we now have an item labeled as a face binder. Now we can either use an additive loft in the part design workbench or a utility loft in the part workbench. For this, I'll use the part workbench. We select our loft modifier, select the sketch we require, in this case, it's this one, because we are pretending that this doesn't exist. Move it over to the right, then select the face binder and do the same. We'll click create solid and press OK. As you can see, we've now lofted from a sketch to a solid part. Just be careful how complex you make the geometry, because as you can see from this B spline part, it gets a little confused with what I've created. Hopefully I've given you something else to experiment with this weekend. I would love to sit here and show examples of what you can create, but that would be a very long YouTube video. Have yourselves a mess around with the loft modifiers, and just get comfortable using them. They're definitely a great addition to the FreeCAD toolbox. If you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, then give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I've been Andrew, you've been Epic, and I'll see you in the next video.